Elite Sports is our partner for all things squaring around merch side. If you want something that's got our faces, our smiling faces, or just our logo on it, hey, hit up EliteSports.com forward slash square. Use code square at checkout. Help out the show. They also got a huge range of athletes to pick from. Elite Sports forward slash star. Check them all out. Ashton Hawkins is on there. Malika Hornsby is on there. Uh, you know, support the team any way you can, right? That's what we talk about on here. So, yeah. Hey, it's up, baby. Exactly. Got to support the athletes. Got to support Elite Sports. And it helps support us. Thank you. Tired of winning the tailgate but losing the games? We can't help that. But we can tell you what the hell is up with each team and what's going on across sunny San Marcos. Texas State fans, get on your feet. You're listening to Squaring Around with Jacob Rodriguez and Andrew Zimmel. What's up, everybody? It's time. It's time for the reigning, defending, Third place Sunbelt Conference in the West, at least, division team. It's podcast. To... Ah, this is such a shitty intro. Whatever. Yeah, that was a shitty one. I did dance, though. I look good. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Squaring Around. I'm Jacob Rodriguez. That to the, my left, or to my right, I guess, depending on how this video is oriented, is the Texas State Sports Press. And we are the loudest, proudest Bobcats you ever met, uh, especially because... I guess the both of us have not been to a game together since what circa 2020 19? No, 2019. Got to be 2019. 2019? Yeah, because sure? COVID happened. I thought we went to a, be- a, be- a bas- basketball game. Basketball mm, game. No, basketball. We went to a basketball game in 2020. I would say football 2019. Yeah, that's true. Crazy. Tough. Absolutely insane. That was when uh, we got Jake Spavital and company to sign our balls. Oh. <laughs> physical balls the one right that's behind me. right yeah. that's right there it is it's right behind jacob i uh i have it in my house and my dad was like you want this and i was like honestly it's worth less now yeah it's literally just connect collecting dust no it's cool and look i'm trying to get the uh football team to sign some gear for us uh on this podcast but you know we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see what happens this, we, um, let's let's be honest we we don't care about sports coverage. This has just been our entree into getting free gear from Texas State. Yes, <laughs> We've never wanted to do to be sports journalists before. No, this is this you is work a at thousand. a call center, you know. Yeah, I know. This is a thousand percent something to just try to like. Yeah. Squeeze. I'm a manager at Home Depot. Let's be honest here. <laughs> just trying to squeeze manager. I got a good title for you. I yeah. work at a call center. Center. You're the manager of Home Depot. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, no, this is a good episode. We we talked to uh. Uh, Leslie from the Wild Crowd did an incredible job um, getting the students packed in there for the ULM game. Um, this is like the person. This is like Texas State has been missing a personality like this for a long time to get somebody to fill the stands like that. And we talk about how they got to this point, how the Loud Crowd was you know, founded, what her tr- path to get this, and how Texas State Athletics has finally kind of put their money where their mouth is and supported uh, a, a fan base initiative to get people in the, those stands and people think this just happens overnight right like you should just support your team support the school that you're going to right it doesn't and that's what leslie got to the root of only on the republic of football podcast network what's up everybody welcome to squaring around if you didn't know by the way texas state has fans now and it's mostly due in large part to the work of leslie olalde and the texas state loud crowd that she is commanding so big ups to Leslie. She's joining us now on the podcast. If you're watching in video format, this is her, not Zimmel, next to me. <laughs> so, uh, Leslie, thank you so much for joining the show. We've been trying to do this for a while because, like, I remember the first game Jackson State. I was telling you before we started recording, like, I was blown away with how many people were there. It was at, like 27,000 or something crazy like that. And I've never seen that ever. Like, maybe for graduation when I graduated, you know, as a COVID grad. So 2020, that was pretty close to it, maybe. So, no, shout out to the loud crowd. Shout out to the fans. How did you get involved with this, Leslie? How did how did this come to be? So we start in 2021. I'm a freshman here. Um, we have our football season, uh, our student section. Their first home game was against Baylor. We had a really great crowd, but after that, I realized that um, a lot of the students would stay there till like at least halftime and then they will leave. Um, I found myself 
finding my way around to go to the front. So it was a really good experience for me and my friends. And then um, close to basketball season, we get an email from that marketing uh, director for athletics. And he was like, I want to start a student section. I want to get to get some people together so we can start building the student section. Um, around December, we got interview. We um, got five officers. And somehow, since I was, you know, we were working with a company at that time to try to get because uh, we started from scratch, like we needed a name for the student section. We need we needed how to learn how to promote the student section. So it was a lot. So I myself took the time to do a lot of the research. Um, I did all the modules and I was basically stepping up and the officers, the other officers saw that and they were like, OK, we want you to be our president. Um, once that happened, uh, we would get together. We did research on other student sections like Baylor, UTSA. How do they get their people to stay all the way from the beginning to the end of the game and win or lose? Um, it took a lot of like different meetings uh, for us to fi finally figure out what the problem was. And um, once that happened, uh, we started our student section during basketball season. We had a really good turnout, whiteout games, blackout games. We were giving away pizza, T-shirts. So it attracted a lot of the students to come to the games. Um, once summer came around, we were also working together for foot to get ready for football season for 2022. We had a good, we had a lot of um, problems with students coming to tailgate and not going to the games just because of our reputation. So um, then from there, we just kind of started finding the small problems and try to trying to see how we can fix those problems before we uh, we try to do anything. So that's how I got involved. It's been pretty fun so far. I've been this president since 2021. I'm now I'm a sophomore, sophomore junior here at Texas State. So it's been a really good experience to see it all. All right. Well, you said something really interesting there. You said you figured out the problem why fans were leaving early. I there's a, a ton bad of reputation. smart people. A bad there's, reputation. A bad there's a reputation. ton of smart people who have tried to figure out that problem. So how did you figure it out? What is what was the problem? What was the main the main issue? So um I figured that the issue was we had a really bad reputation for football, but also a lot of the people which is will like to go to tailgate. And since it tailgate is fun, you know, a lot of people like drinking, they will just go to tailgate and go back home. So we figure that if, you know, like if we have a really good football team, um, then people will come to the games. And so we were hoping that by our first football game um, against Baylor, I mean, we had two away games before. So we figure if we win one of those two games, uh, people will want to come to our first home game. And people did show up to our first home game. And that was you're talking about this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Okay, got you. No, because the question had always been, I think, for, for Texas State fans and for, I think Jacob and I have had this conversation a couple times, both on the podcast and off, was it was like, what comes first, winning or fans? Yeah, it was very chicken and the egg. Up, you know, like chicken and the egg. So I'm glad that we definitively, square around, we figured out the answer. It is definitively win football games, fans will come. Like, yeah. we, we oh, right awesome. here, Leslie, we figured it out. I don't know if we well, yeah, figured also, that out. I think that was Leslie, but yeah. Well, Leslie figured it out. Leslie confirmed. She confirmed the theory of the she's fan. A, she's bill. a scientist of the, yeah. of the student section. But Dr. Dr. Say, Leslie figured it out. I would say um, one thing that one of the basketball coaches said at once, he was like, we play way harder when the fans are in the building. So for us to have a lot of fans at the student section, not just the student section, but the whole football stadium, basketball stadium, and for us to just be on our feet 24-7, cheering for our team, you know, it takes a big part on our guys to play um, to play way harder because, you know, someone's there watching them, someone's there cheering them on from the beginning of the game all the way to the end of the game. So, yeah, I feel like – You know what's crazy? And, like, I don't think you're going to get enough credit for this. So you start in 2021 because COVID pretty much kills any momentum Texas State had when it came to like fan support. Because I remember, again, Jacob and I, old guys here, 2020-ish, like 2019, like 
basketball stadium was getting kind of full, especially for men's games. Like we were, we were getting kind of rowdy. We we're getting, getting the people there. Jacob and I had the baseline seats every single time to, you know, Nigel Pearson's chagrin. I think, I don't think he was super happy with us being on the baseline all the time. Nigel was um, not an Andrew Zimmel fan. He was not a, not a fan of the Zimmel. So that's, <laughs> that's fine. But, um, no, to, so to kind of build something from essentially scratch, you're trying to raise a fan from the ashes and to have it turn out this good in year two, year three, that that's really saying something. Lightning in a bottle, really. And um, I'll say it it's, it takes a lot for you to do that, especially as a student. I mean, I am involved in many other things. So, uh, you know, the support from athletics, support from coaches, athletes, you know, after the first home game, I know I had a couple of football players come up to me and be like, hey, you're doing great. Like, keep bringing out the fr- the fans, keep keep doing what you're doing, because, I mean, it makes an impact for sure. And having that support system with athletics or athletic director, marketing, um, basketball coaches, football coaches, volleyball coaches, it's 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 great. <laughs> That would be nuts too if like athletics was like this is all on the students. This is going to be a homegrown like grassroots thing. So like, what does that support look like? Because I know you're you're super close with obviously Dr. Dampas and and uh, Don Coriel, uh, but like, what is like I guess like your day to day or like your relationship with those guys look like? So I'm a very people person. So like I like to put myself out there. Um, I'm really not afraid to just walk up to someone and be like, hi, I'm so and so nice to meet you. So that's kind of what I did with both of them. Um, They at the beginning, I started working for athletics and then 2021 started working for them. Then I started learning a lot about marketing promotion. So I was around most of the time and now I work as the social media assistant for athletics. So I'd be around that atmosphere all the time. And we kind of get together at some point to try to talk about how do we you know, bring people to the games. So our relationship is pretty good. Um, It makes an impact just because, you know, you have, I know that at the end of the day, I have that support system that is always going to be there. You know, they have that duo connection between our president and our athletic director. So it's really good to see um, and to have that support system as a student. Which is totally different from the support system that I think anybody else, like, I think you are going to be the first class that 20, what would what, you, I guess, what would that be? 2024, 2025 or whatever. What's your graduating yeah. class? I think that's going to be the first class that has had like a, some sort of athletic director and president that have like cared about athletics at the same time. Like, which is saying something because Texas has been around for Jacob will tell us like a hundred years. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, more than that, obviously. <laughs> so it's a big deal that we finally have like a, a AD and a, and a president who care about athletics as much as uh, Kelly and Don do. Um, what, who's your favorite coach with, when you have interactions? Mm. Ooh, you're going to make or a like favorite? Football or <laughs> basketball? Or... It doesn't matter. I, that's an open-ended question. That could be oh. an assistant coach. That could be a head coach. That could be anybody. Yeah. Be I'll, tell you, I'll tell you mine. It's coach Steve Trout. I love that man so much. <laughs> <laughs> I would say coach TJ. Okay. Yeah, okay. TJ. TJ. I text TJ sometimes. That's my guy. <laughs> yeah, TJ great. and Jacob have a really good relationship. Mm-hmm. Coach Dante for men's basketball, he's a great person. I mean, every time they Hall have of Famer. A, they he introduced me to the family. This is so and so. She helps us a lot with the student section. Um, I really I met Coach DJ, but I haven't been around him much. But yeah, every time I see him, I'm you know, I'm always saying hello. Um, but yeah. It's because uh too. when he's not leading our team to glory, he's playing NCAA 14. <laughs> As we learned on our podcast, he, he's also them. recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. That's the other part. Yeah, he's virtually um, recruiting in game. He's on. Before. This is a good time to rope in. He's on the watch list. I don't know if you guys saw that. He's on the watch list for Coach of the Year. Oh, so, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's five and two, up. Texas State. That gets him on the. Uh, and look, I think that that's a big part, not only for his brand but also for the brand of Texas State. Because if you have a coach who is on those short lists for those major awards, all of a sudden there's a chance that you might get a recruit. Like, hey, do I want to go with GJ or do I want to go with the guy in say San Antonio whose team isn't that good this year, right? Like, so there are I, I think little little recruiting nuggets in that, and of course, you know, for his personal brand, um, for his personal brand too. Uh, all right, let's talk about the last game because that is the best turnout I think Texas State's ever had. The blackout game this past week well, against fifth largest. Uh, well, let me fifth largest okay, fifth time. largest. I don't give a shit about that. What I do care about uh, okay. is the here's what here's what I'm saying. There's a difference between having uh 
there's 30,000 people at stadium and 28 of them being Houston fans or 25 of them being army fans or Navy fans. It's another thing to have that entire stadium packed with Texas state fans. That's what I'm talking about. And that stadium was packed with Bobcat fans. What was the atmosphere like in there? Cause Jacob, he's a journo. He's on the sideline. He has to be like completely non, but like nonpartisan, but you aren't, you are like me, you're a fan. So what was it like in that stadium? So blackout game, we started off. I'm usually on the sideline just because I work for athletics as a social media assistant, but I do. You're take another my- person filling up those sidelines that Jacob can't walk around. I love it. <laughs> Dude, it's so intense, right? Back me up. There's like 200 people on the sidelines now. I also take the time to go around their student section and take videos of them um, just because I love to see that atmosphere and highlight our students a lot. Um, it was amazing. I mean, when you have families coming to the games, students coming to the games, and I mean, the whole student section got packed again, and not just from the beginning to halftime, from the beginning all the way to the end of the game. And it was just amazing to see how students are standing up. You don't have to tell them to get up. They're cheering on their ball cats, and it's like they're just constantly having that energy, whereas when I was what back 2022, we were like at the sitting at the front of the student section, getting everybody like stand up, stand up, like cheer, let, let's do this chant. This time it's just like I'm seeing everybody standing up 24 seven. And it's just amazing to sit there and watch from the sidelines just because like. I don't know, it's just it was great. <laughs> Jacob, we got to cut in the photo of me being the what a fan of the game where it was me. And the girlfriends of the players; those were the only people in the student section. Yeah. And, and you know what? For good reason, because I'm pretty sure we lost that game. So we know. did. I blame the referees. That's what I'm yelling at <laughs> in that in that photo. I'm yelling at the referees in that game. No, I mean like this is this is something that I saw alumni tweeting about all week, and it you see the videos from Texas State. I think the athletic page posted one. Jacob posted one on the Squaring Around uh, Twitter page. <laughs> Where it's like we didn't get that undeniable, that grad- huh? Undeniable, not undeniable. We got alums from 2015, 2016 who were tweeting at me, being like, you know, and DMing me saying, like, where was this when we were there? Why like, did a lot of salty alums about that? Like, a lot of salty alums didn't now, have I don't this blame experience. Them. I don't blame <laughs> them because, like, what all it took was a good football team. Is that kind of it, it took a good football team, but it clearly you did a lot of legwork to get this to like happen. So congratulations to you. Thank you for getting our student section to look this good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I also feel like having this, you know, how you have alumni saying, where was this when I was in school? So like my goal is for us to graduate and be like, oh my gosh, we had that when we were in school. We want to go back to, you know, to that atmosphere. And like for alumni to see this now, it's like, now we have those people that want to come back and get that experience that they didn't have. So it's a really good, mm. it's a really good feeling, you know, having those to come back and be like, okay, now I want to be part of this. And um, yeah, that's, that's the goal. To well, I know it. when, when they announced you, I guess, as the president or like that, the loud crowd was like coming back. A lot of people were like, whoa, what the heck? This is back now. Like, I guess like it had always been there, but then it like just fell off or like maybe the organization or support wasn't behind it. And so people were like really glad to see you guys off and running. But then immediately they were like, okay, what about basketball? What about baseball? What about? And then like, I don't think like people realize like how many pieces kind of have to fall in line to even get like what you guys are getting right now, because you guys are chasing down like attendance records. Now at this point, that ULM game I mentioned was the fifth largest of all time. We're chasing the largest of all time, 33,000, which was set in 2016 against Houston. It should be noted too, that that ULM team, not very good. Like it's not, that's not a premier matchup. Dudes aren't waking up on Saturday morning being like, I can't wait to see the Warhawks play, you yeah. know? So we got a big one coming up in two weeks against Troy and that's a homecoming game, you know? Mm-hmm. So talk to us about that. Okay. So homecoming is coming up. Uh, they did change the time to like what? Six. six yeah. Um, I feel like it would that's be after dark. Good as well, just because a lot of our students were complaining on how hot it was when we had morning games. So it brings a lot of uh, um, attendance as well. Uh, I'm really excited just because um, throwback to SWT, you know, we love our throwback shirts. Um, so I feel like a lot of the alumni are going to come back. And since they are seeing our 
team doing good this year, they're going to want to come back to that one specific game. And I also feel like a lot of people are going to come back just because that will be the game that would let us know if we make it to a bowl game. Um, we also have homecoming events throughout the whole week. Um, a lot of the people, a lot of the students are getting excited. I'm also running for homecoming court. So it's just, you know, yeah, I saw that too. I'll put your, I'll put your link right here. So we can vote for you. Thank you. For Thank you. Voting <laughs> starts tomorrow, eight o'clock in the morning. All right. But yeah, I feel like it will be a really good turnout. A lot of people are talking about how they're bringing their families. Um, I don't know. It's just, I'm excited. All we have to do is keep promoting, keep spreading the word. And yeah. And we got to win. <laughs> that's, win. The, that's the biggest Definitely. part. We got to win. We this is the, win this is, win. This is like the best of the West lining I up. I wonder here. if they're still doing the jumping to the, jumping at the river after the game. Oh yeah, that's what Kelly had said. As soon as this team becomes bowl eligible, that's, he wants that's to. That's a really go good jump into point. Team. So I might not even make the press conference. I might have to go jump in the river too. <laughs> no, you actually, you actually might. We might have to not. I here's a question for you, Jerno Jacob. Jerno Would Jacob. you rather have a press conference or the jump in the river? Dude, when I saw Kelly post game after Baylor and he was completely soaked after he like hang out in the locker room for like five minutes after that win, I was like, well, whatever he does now is the story. Like, this is ridiculous. So mm -hmm. if he starts running to the river like <laughs> a minute after the fourth quarter, I'm going to have to go follow him, you know? <laughs> uh, I am so like, I, I'm very happy with what you're doing. I'm proud of like the way that you've built this like, fan base program because i remember being the lone guy watching a tuesday night basketball game i remember jacob and i sitting co court side because hand in hand nobody nobody was there you know i i remember jacob do you remember that game that we were at and the girl behind us was like sit down it was the blackout game and we were standing <laughs> up in the front row and she was like would you sit down i can't see I'm like what are we and doing that, and that same girl also gave me a free beer so i have no complaints here but <laughs> yeah i get your point it was pretty sparse connections for sure and like it's not like let like it would be one thing if like texas state didn't have the facilities obviously we have that and we're doing a lot more with less like some people are like well we should have tvs in the concourse and all this stuff and that, that's great but you know things take time to line up like we were saying earlier i i said if there is like enough if we put enough people in the seats so like what's the average what's the average attendance right now would you say like ballpark it for me oh i can i can do it right now actually the average attendance we have right now this is uh i got game notes i thought wow. these were fourth quarter stats but this is actually the attendance history that chris handed me so i don't even know what happened in the fourth quarter of the game but i can tell you attendance stuff uh total attendance right now is averaging at twenty three thousand six hundred and thirty seven. I think when we're averaging 27, that's when we put the TVs in the concourse. Well, <laughs> this is the thing, too, for everybody that's like, Tech State should be doing more. Go buy a beer, man. Go help us out. Right. Go buy a hot dog buy or something. Ticket. Come to the games. Buy, buy a ticket. ticket. Come to the game. Get some season tickets. Get some and, I'll and this is the crazy. This is the part that we need to plug in here because season tickets for two people, 300 bucks. That's the best deal in Central Texas. That's nuts. That's you're right. To get Six season games. tickets, that's cheap as hell. I was that talking is. to Jacob. I was like, why don't we just buy season tickets and have us and our friends go? I live in North Dakota. I'm not going to any games. So let's mm -hmm. get the tickets and have one somebody else show up every week. Um, but yeah, man, it's and those tickets are gonna be more expensive next year. I can guarantee you that. Right. Like they they're hearing us on this podcast talking about it, and they're gonna be like, yo, 250 bucks per ticket price of the brick going up yeah. per person. Uh, yeah, per person. No, no kidding. Yeah, I know it's gonna be it's gonna be insane next year. Um yeah. So, all right. I would we'd be we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about ULM and people stealing tridents, yeah, water bottle game. water bottles. Is that a concern to you in any way, rowdy yes. fans? Okay. Yes. I feel like it is a concern to me because physically I'm not sitting at the student section, but I am standing on the sidelines, so I get to see it all, and it's a concern to me just because at the end of the day they know who I am, and if anything happens, like. Leslie, you're responsible or like it comes back to me. So um, that's why we always try to make posts about make sure you keep it classy. Make sure you just, you know, cheer on for the Bobcats. Don't talk too much trash. Um, it, it is a concern just because, uh, like I said, I'm not there. And, you know, a lot of people are like quick to just turn stuff around and just come back to me because I'm the president. I'm the one doing this. So it, it is concerning. 
And with that situation, I wasn't really, um, I didn't really get to know what truly happened on the first game or the second game against what JSU? Nevada with the Nevada. Trident. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really know what happened with that. And uh, we were, I was trying to look into it, but I couldn't really find any information. However, for the game last week, I was using the ladies room and I'm walking out the tunnel and all I hear is boo and people saying stop throwing stuff on the field. So I'm literally running because I see cops running um, and I'm running. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And they were like, you know, somebody tossed the bottle. Then like all the students just started tossing bottles. I was like, oh my Jesus, like what is happening? So then I was like, okay, I'm going to have to make a post tomorrow saying, please be aware of like the way you represent yourself, the way you represent the school and the people who are around you. And I did make a post on the loud crowd Instagram. And, um, but yeah, it's concerning. I'll, uh, I'll be Leslie's anger translator because she's very, you know, political right now. She's like, She's she's navigating the situation as she should, you know, the general, the loud crowd. This is the context behind this, everybody. Nevada, we kind of know what happened with that, right? Um, they had the turnover trident, and then uh allegedly a band, a Texas State Bobcat band member handed the trident to the loud crowd, and then they parted with the trident. Um that's neither here nor there. Whatever. We'll move past that. That's like three games ago, right? Right. <laughs> the water bottle gate. Kind of different because allegedly a ULM player threw a water bottle into the crowd and may have broken somebody's nose. I don't know if that was confirmed or denied, but the athletics department is looking into it. The Sun Belt is looking into it. And ULM's coach was pressed pre or post game, I should say. Uh, this is like the quote that he had in like their like post game media thing. It went from being the best Sunbelt crowd I've ever seen to one of the worst. They threw bottles. They threw cans. They hit our players with them. That should not happen. I hope they correct that because it's dangerous. One of our guys, our, our guys got taken off because he threw a can back up into the crowd, which he should never have done. But you can imagine their feelings getting hit by cans and things. So I don't know which happened first. That's not for me to decide. That's not for Leslie to decide. Uh, but, you know, I guess I'm proud if it happened like one way, like if the ULM player did it first. Then like, yeah, stick up for somebody. But no, maybe no. not interfere with the game, right? Hey, let me no. finish. Don't throw shit on the field, period. Don't do it story. at all. At all. Thank you. Leslie and I we were, were on doing, the same side here. We were doing so good. At we were. Being, we were doing great. And I don't know. I guess it's just one of those times where things happen. They make mistakes and like fix them. But don't ever do it again. Because our reputation, come on, guys. We are, we, we are having a great crowd. We're doing so good. Like. Rabid no. fan base. I, I don't know. Maybe this you know, is the growing pains of it, though, right? Because if you go from nothing or maybe like what were we averaging last year, like 17,000, I think that's what this thing says. Yeah, we had like 20,000 according to this. I don't know if that's right. But, that's <laughs> but, but no way. Um, uh, if we had like whatever that was last year to this now, you know, there's going to be some people that maybe have not gone to football games. Or as I was explaining to Mike Craven for Dave Campbell's Texas football on the sideline, you know, this is like three to four drink energy crowd right now. You know, they've had a good time at the tailgates. They've had a good time making their way over to Bobcat Stadium. Now they're here. Now they're seeing the game for what it is, you know? See, and that is to me, that is the, uh, the elephant in the room here. It is the fact that that is late in the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? This is a this is a crowd that knows that they like to get a little rowdy, like to get a couple drinks with them, a little lubricant going. I I think that plays a part in it, which leads me to this take. Well, I understand where the crowd is. I understand where the the where the student section is. A lot of people really like that. I don't know where else you're gonna put them, um, because you put the band in behind the end zone. But I thought behind the end zone made sense because you couldn't throw shit, you couldn't hit players, you, you were far enough away. But I I get it. Leslie, where we're at now, is that a good place for us behind the visitor bench? I would say, yeah, just because I've never experienced the the Anything crowd different? behind the band. So I don't know. I guess we just used to that. And it also, it's a lot of space. So for that, it's just like now it's getting packed from section 117 all the way to like 120, the, the, the last section. So I feel like it's really a impressive. Really good, like it's, yeah, like it goes from one to one, you know, like one mm -hmm. end zone to one end zone almost. Yeah. So it doesn't make that little part empty on the TV because when we used to not have that many crowd, it would be so empty. So uh, having that now packed, it's just like, 
you know, it looks good on TV. It and looks- you guys get to sit in the sun too. So that's the other part. You know right. what I mean? Because it, it's the, the sun sets that way. So if you guys are liking it, I'm not going to complain. I just look at it and I say, you know, between the Trident and the water bottle, I, I don't think, I think those are kind of like the tip of the iceberg here. And I hope it doesn't get worse, but I, I foresee more of these situations as mm-hmm. time goes on. I hope not, but that's just. Well, hey, if they are. if they ruin this, they're not going to have dollar beer night ever at Bobcat Stadium. So everybody needs to be on their best behavior. So we right. can yeah. prove to everybody that we deserve a dollar beer night. That would be, you know what? If we go bowling, can we get dollar beer night? Dollar beer night. Football team wins, fans win? Huh? <laughs> huh? Let's get the conversation started. Well, last question I wanted to ask you, Leslie, is homecoming, big game. Obviously, you guys have like a week now to, or more than a week now to promote it because we have a bye week this week. Um, like, do you think we break the all time attendance record against Troy for homecoming? Oh, God. Um, I think so. I'm confident and I think we are just because Texas State, um, Texas State University, Texas State student involvement, um, I mean, athletics, uh, football, us, we're like constantly promoting the game just because it is homecoming. So it's it takes a lot throughout the whole week since we do have a lot of Texas State pride and traditions and we have a lot of good events happening throughout the whole week. And then anybody who's running for homecoming court, I know their families are going to want to come. It's the last game before we, you know, find out if we make it to the, um, what is it called? Bowling? Um, yeah. yeah. Bowl. If we become bowl eligible. Yeah. Bowl eligible. Eligible. There you go. So I think we will have a really good crowd. Uh, it's just a matter of us keep advertising it, promoting it anywhere we possibly can. What's the what's the environment on campus like? Because that was another big thing that we never had. We never had on campus spirit period at all ever. So, does it feel like there's like on a Friday with a home game on Thursday? Do you feel it? Friday? Do you feel it that there's a home game coming up on Saturday? Mm, I don't still kind of lacking. I have I don't be on campus throughout those those two days, but I know that on Tuesdays. Uh, Texas State Athletics Marketing Department do go out there and they promote any game, volleyball, basketball, football. They go out there and, you know, promote it at the quad. And I know we had Coach uh, DJ out there before. He was giving out breakfast to the students. So uh, we do that have that day where we, like, they promote. Um, but other than that, it's just social media, Instagram, sending out. We do have a Texas State group me for the loud crowd, and we have a lot of freshmen, a lot of students there, and we just send out the information about all the upcoming games, um, not just for football, but for any other sport. So, yeah. Here, it, here cool, is cool. the line, the difference that has to happen between like ULM 27-537 and the all-time record 33,133. We need 5,596 fans. Well, I guess one more, right? 97 fans. To break that record. So hopefully having Leslie on this podcast will inspire some Bobcats on. Uh, oh, yeah. Come through. I hope so. And look, we're really, I, I'll i speak for Jacob and I. We're really proud of what you're doing over there. We're really, as as alums, we're really happy when I turn on ESPN Plus, when Jacob goes to games and sees the environment that Texas State has kind of like began to produce. And I will always say that putting a winning football team on the crowd, on the field will always bring fans but what you have done the last couple of years has really impressed, I think, Jacob and I both, to get this many fans in the stadium and to get this much excitement around the uh, the fan base for this program. So thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so much for, for joining us. We can't wait to see what you guys do in the future for basketball, for baseball, for softball, for, for everything that we got going on in San Marcos. Of course. Thank you for having me. And I hope to see everyone at the homecoming game. Vote for Leslie. Yeah, vote for me. <laughs> Turn tomorrow, 8 a.m. Squaring Around is also proud to be brought to you by Homefield Athletics. Homefield is your one-stop shop for everything. College football, they got teams from all over the damn country. Not Texas State, though. So, if you're a Minnesota Gopher fan, go on Homefield. Use code SQUARE at checkout for 15% off. And if you're a returning user, maybe you're just a Homefield addict. You can't get enough. 10% off your order from here on out. Use code SQUARE. My brother, his birthday is coming up, 21st birthday. He's a proud fight naggy. Use code SQUARE. Save a little bit of money. That was a great interview from Leslie. Really gave us some insight. She told us actually after we stopped recording. This is a good question I asked later. Well, we weren't rolling. <laughs> but 
she was telling us that now they're getting like asked like hey how do you guys do this so fast you know like what what stuff are you looking at and you know like basically how are you going to keep this going forward so that's pretty sick um you know even to have that on your resume as a student is like pretty good Leave it to Capital J journalist Jacob to uh, not ask the best question until after the camera stopped rolling. Well, you know, uh, you no. know. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. it, that's like a 50 50 question. What if like they hadn't, you know? Sure. I, I so, try to ask home runs. Now, yeah, this is the Sammy Sosa of interviewers. And you can um, still you can still report that, too. So technically we did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, point is, is that I'm really proud of her. I'm really proud of uh, the Texas State loud crowd for finally doing something here to like build any semblance of like fan engagement, fan interaction. It's interesting though that they, they still, the student section. It's interesting they still don't have any on campus spirit. Normally, like, because that was a big conversation we've always had was that because Fridays are a day that nobody comes to class, Game day Fridays are a day that people. Yeah, the game day atmosphere never is really there. So I you kind of have to shift atmosphere. that over to Thursday. So it's like to, to do the stuff on Tuesday, I make sense. I do think that they still need to come up with something on Thursday to, to add to that. I think they're doing some, as you mentioned, like they've had like uh, breakfast tacos or donuts in the quad. Yeah, they've been doing that like when that. we were there. All good. Yeah. But when we were there, granted, you know, we weren't winning games. This is true, which I, I think about the Withers and the Spavital eras and stuff like that. And it's like those eight years are kind of just dead. You know what I mean? Like nothing really happened. Um, and now one year is coming back for homecoming. Yeah. I wonder, we're going to see a lot of former players. So I already know Brady's going to be there. I have a bunch of friends that are going to this game. Um, people have been hitting me up, following us on Twitter. Uh, for all of our new listeners, thank you so much for 700 followers. More than that on uh, Twitter, AKA X. Um, so yeah, appreciate the listens. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to our stuff too at Square and Pod. Uh, you can also, you know, subscribe to us on Spotify, on Apple, on YouTube. That all helps our little algorithm thing and keeps our engine going, so to speak. Um, Zimmel, let's talk about this team's engine. ULM Texas State. Uh, you and I pretty panicked in this game. Not gonna lie, we were a little defeatist in the third quarter. And as I was making my way downtown, walking fast. Faces pass and I'm homebound. Da, na, 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 na. I was like, we're losing this fucking game for sure. No yeah. chance. Going down 11 points in the fourth quarter, never a good idea. Uh, I thought ULM, they, they, Terry Bowden, man, he's got this historic lineage of coaching and like, um, he always finds a way to get something going in, for these Monroe teams. That team wasn't better than Texas State. I don't know what the deal was. Came into offense, a hostile like, atmosphere. The offense looks stagnant. It just the I was really concerned about Mac uh, Leftwich and the offense the entire game. I thought some of the play calls were kind of like, "What are we doing here?" Um, it was the first time that I actually kind of questioned that aspect of the Texas State team. Defensively, we showed up. We played really good, and TJ Finley once again showed up to be the man. Um, I'm at the beginning of the year. We we had LSU fans and Arkansas fans talking to us about. TJ Finley and hey, you know, what do we expect from an LSU quarterback who couldn't cut it right? Bad accuracy. And this kid from the time he has started in the Baylor game to now has only gotten better. The arm strength is incredible. And Joey Hobart as well. That kid, you, you can't you can't say enough about him. Offensive player of the week it. again in the Sun Belt. Um, he's just those two guys have been the cream of the crop. Ishmael Madi having a bu- busted up wrist. That is going to be a problem, especially in this Troy game coming up in two weeks. But we don't have that secondary running back. And I think that the ULM game. No, really no, 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 no. Pray tell, Zimmel. I, I say Denario Davenport is going to establish himself no. as the number two back. He had some pretty no, good no. carries. Wasn't enough, really, to separate it in my mind to be like, of course, Ish is going to get all the damn carries in the world. Um, I was impressed that ULM, the Mighty Warhawks, were able to hold TJ Finley to like, what was it? Less than 200 yards or something. I think he had, he had 200 yards, but it wasn't like 250. He held him under 200 yards for three quarters for sure. 222 was the final. So, you know, still over 200, but in the second half or the first half, I should say he was limited to under 150, which is like what the other guy, Jaya Wright was averaging ahead of that game, like total for the games. So not a very impressive passing team 
But again, just a kind of mobile quarterback that was able to dice us up on the inside and then make connections with his wide receivers on the outside. And that's and that's the two parts. Part one, Texas State mobile quarterback. That is the kryptonite for this defense. I don't know what the deal is. These mobile quarterbacks. Frank Harris on one leg was dicing up Texas State. I don't know what the deal is with these mobile quarterbacks, man, but they're a problem. And Texas State faces a couple more of them throughout the season. Part number two that really got me concerned here is the fact that we went into halftime and we had the same game plan coming out of the half. You know what I mean? Like, what like just here, attack guys? the ball again, like do nothing different, which exactly. is very concerning because you talk about game planning, adaptability of an offense, like, uh, and let's be honest, like Texas state has been in different scenarios, right? In Southern miss, like very different scenario than it is this week, right? We were ahead by a lot and we really didn't have to change too much. And what di- changed for some reason was the defense. I don't know what the hell is that. That was whatever. Put that game behind us. ULL, another weird kind of game, uh, which was ours to lose pretty much. In both those games, Southern Miss and ULL, we get a big lead and we give it up. And then Mm -hmm. in this game, we never were able to establish a lead. And then the second half, we're playing like we had a big lead. And it just, it it was frustrating in that regard. Look, this is a Texas State team that showed resiliency. This is a Texas State team that showed us once again that they are not the type of team that uh, we thought of a couple years ago. Two years ago, a year ago, that team loses. No doubt in my mind. That team is, it loses. You and I um, have seven years of experience, seven seasons, if you will, of covering this team. Yeah. None of those teams would have won that game. None of those teams. Past weekend. I, I do want to ask you this. When Texas State scores with 45 seconds left, do you think too much time on the clock? Absolutely, because they drove down the field, and it wasn't for that penalty we got kind of late, and then a, a couple defensive stops. Which, I think Brian Holloway caught another body out there. Um, yeah, it would be. Which can we talk about? We we talked to Leslie about the the loud crowd. GJ Kenny said after the game, we don't win that game without the student section. I'm glad you brought that up. The crowd was amazing. The student section was amazing. You could feel it um, when, when we started going that we were going to win that game, and a lot of it because of the crowd. So uh, really appreciate that, and and uh, we're going to need it again um, after the bye. That I asks. can tell you definitively, we don't win that game without the student section because their best receiver was the guy who got kicked out. He, he even retweeted out. you on that. <laughs> he got kicked out. Holloway got kicked out. Uh, the UL, ULM wide receiver, who's probably their best receiver, he gets kicked out of the game because he throws something in the stands. Never do that. Bad on him. But Texas State, they put the backup receiver in there. They run a pick play on accident, right? Because I don't imagine they try to do it on purpose. Uh, they get the offensive pass interference. You move him back another 10 yards. The rest is history. So it's very, to me, it's telling that it took something like that. It took Texas State getting, honestly, a bailout a little bit, let's be honest here, to win that game. And look, TJ Finley, Joey Hobart, all look good. I do want to, before we move on to anything else, we got to talk about your guy, Ashton Hawkins. Hawkins. Well, this is week two now that we've brought him up on this podcast in this light. Last uh, week, right, against Louisiana he Lafayette. Fumbles. He, he made a fumble, major fumble, to end the game. Been- Yes. ULL falls on the ball, waits out the clock. What do you do? That's smart football, you know? If we, Especially now, like we were playing last-minute football. I was nervous that that was going to happen again. I'll be honest. Um, TJ Finley fed the hot hand. Joey Hobart had a good game. Uh, Hawkins did not, though. Uh, let me look no. up these receiving totals, actually. And he had another game where he has a bunch of costly drops. Another yeah. game targeted where he targeted nine last... times in that game. With how many catches? Three drops. You have to click on the stat to get the other stat. Yeah. That is that's a tough one. Three so three draws for Hawkins. I think that puts his total up of the season close to ten drops on the season. Yeah, I'll have to go back and like, click on each individual game total to get that. But Jacob, yeah. That you that can't happen for what's supposed to be the number one receiver on the in the team. And I was team. talking to I was talking to our buddy Zach Webb on the sideline about this, but like factor in the Baylor game. If he had all those catches, I mean, might be leading the team in reception yards. Baylor, Nevada, it was kind of like that too. Uh, this game, UTSA. like that too. ULL, like that too. UTSA, yeah, he had a pretty good one. Ah, you hate to see it. You literally hate to see it. I mean, this is my guy, right? And I'm standing on this hill. I'm not letting the take die. <laughs> No, and that's fair, but I'm going to tell you from a Tech State fan perspective, every time the ball is thrown to him, I cringe. Yeah. Every time the ball is thrown to him, I'm concerned that he's not going to keep it. Well, and you can tell why they're kind of using him, how they're using him now, too. Like, they're moving him out into the slot. He's kind of 
not really the main the that first read option now, you know. So I don't know. Working his way. If Texas State wants to win a bowl game, we cannot have two and a half receivers. But we have I say to have again, three. I say again, if Hawkins comes up big in a bowl game, is that good enough? Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. If he if he has five the whole, catches, the whole rest of the season is fine. If he figures if he it has out, five post-season. catches for fifty yards and a touchdown, that's fine in a bowl win. I don't. That's fine. Yeah, we can erase everything else. But we're not in a bowl game right now. We're five and two, and we could be six and one if he doesn't fumble against ULL. So you know, I'm looking at it that way. And look, I'm a very positive person. We're very positive on this podcast. We have said we have said very little bad things about the Sex State team to this point. I have to say. What is going on? Like, what is going on? And I, I, neither of us play college football. Neither of us was in a position to even play a position at that level, right? Like, in our wildest dreams, we wouldn't be as good as Ashton Hawkins is at the game of football. But when I'm watching him on Saturdays, he's not playing very well. So I, I'm concerned about that. We need him to kind of, you know, get his head out of the sand and, and play play better, and make some catches because. You can't have, like I said, you either you either need to find a third receiver to step up, or you need him to be the third receiver because Cole Wilson's doing his job, Hobart's doing his job, Ishmadi's playing with a busted hand, doing his job, and you know we don't have a backup running back, we don't have another another running back, we don't have a third receiver. I uh, was kind of glad to see uh, that we have a tight end again. Uh, it's Sean Shaw, who's made that transition from you know just kind of like a big big wide receiver to a big body. In. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's filling that kind of role for us. Also Connor Fox, Kansas state transfer, uh, got to see his first completion. I actually have that on film. Uh, I was really surprised. I was like, Hey, that's that guy. That's him. <laughs> so we have some weapons in development right now, but you know, nothing compares to, to our silver bullet right now. Freaking Joey Hobart, dude, that guy's insane. He led the, the freaking team with targets at 18. Uh, so that's double Hawkins, which is probably for the best, right? Yes. So. And Joey Hubbard, he's been the breakout star. Like if you said to me, Nuts. team MVP, if you said team MVP is probably TJ, you told me team offensive player of the year, it, it's probably Ish Mani, you told me breakout star. It, it's got to be Hobart, right? And I think on the defensive side, Ben Bell, maybe he's your defensive MVP at the halfway point of the season. I think that Holloway, right? Or you know what I mean? Like, am mm-hmm. I wrong? Yeah. I mean, if you ask Craven, it's the guy who's on crutches right now, Tory Spears, which doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, I think Holloway or Ben Bell, you can make the case for either guy. Uh, Jamel Jeter also, you know, had some flashes of greatness in that game. Um, but the running back? Team, yeah, Jamel Jeter. Yeah, no. Come on. No, no, no. you're not buying into it. I, I'm look, still, I I'm want still G- high on my guy, Daniel Davenport. To be I, want Jeter, I want Jeter and Davenport to step up and play well. Neither of them have. Like, I'm not going to give a guy who's had a couple of good touches. The, all right, you're the RB2 because, you know, we're not at that point yet. What if I told you, Morpheus, that Denario Davenport actually led rushing yards? That wouldn't shock me at all. He started running back. <laughs> what did you think of Hornsby? Um, dude, what the fuck was that? <laughs> DJ told us himself. This guy's going to have a, a more like a, what, like a bigger role, basically. Integral part, yeah. Ball. Yeah. And then he came out there for one play, had a yard. What the hell is that? I don't know. I think that's insulting to his athleticism. He's a smaller running back. You need those offensive linemen to give him a big hole. I think that he works better when he has the potential to throw the ball too. I'd be kind of curious to see what that looks like. Can we get a situation where we run like a super back set with him at the quarterback position, two running backs either side, and now we're running like essentially option with like a drag route with or a, a tight end too. I'd be curious to see what that looks like. But again, you know, by week, we'll see what happens against Troy on, on homecoming. They've been using him, too, as kind of that goal line threat, you know, because he's so damn fast. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Um, you can't even replicate it. Like, I see him do it in real time, and I'm like, whatever. Um, but I, I would like to see him. Like, that's been the failure of this team is, like, the inability to kind of punch it in and, like, really, like, leave no doubt on the field, basically. Like, this isn't well, we, just... yeah. Fancy dancy offense stuff. This is us winning the game outright, being dominant on all fronts. And I, I guess I kind of would like to see him just be that threat. But also, like, why don't you, if nothing is working on offense, why not just let him lace it? You know, do you want him to play quarterback? I don't know. 
Well, we're using him as a quarterback effectively if we're not going to use him as a running back, right? Mm. So I'm still not he lined on, up at running back. I'm still not on board with him coming in and playing quarterback when the offense is stagnant. I, I'm still very much like we let TJ run the we let, let TJ run the offense until he gets hurt or until he makes enough mistakes that we have to make a decision mm-hmm. or ma- and make a change. I don't want him. I do not want Horns to be playing in games that are winnable games just because we don't have faith in Horn or a bit because we don't have faith in TJ Finley. It would Keep take Finley a, in there. And, a Tua and, and run Hurt the... situation for you to to switch corners. No, no, I even that is just that's such a ballsy call. If if we're in a bowl game and we're making that switch at halftime and we don't win that game, I'm gonna be pissed. No, yeah, I'll be honest. Sure. And then the other no, guy's no. gonna transfer out. <laughs> well, and that's halfway point of the season. We're at the bye week. Hornsby, does he stick around? I don't think TJ sticks around. Really? Yeah, I don't think TJ sticks around. Okay. Well, does he even have an eligibility left? Let's be honest here. <laughs> I think he does. I think he's in COVID. Let me look it up. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I forget all these guys can basically graduate with two master's degrees if they wanted to. Yeah, your PhD. He right he's a red shirt sophomore. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's nuts, bro. So you want to you wanna re- retake that? Because he got red shirted at LSU. That makes sense. And then yeah. he went to Auburn. He played at Auburn. He played at LSU too. Let's keep it real. Um, and then he came over here. That's crazy. I was. Do you want to? You want to try again? Do you think that uh, Texas? Do you think he? Uh, do you think Hornsby stays, or you think that TJ stays? He will be back, and his twins will be in the audience next year. Okay. There you go. I got yeah. nothing else for you. Hornsby? I don't know. Jerry's still out. How old is Hornsby? Let's look it up. I don't think Horn. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I don't think Hornsby stays. You don't think so? But what, no, has, that would be my what, what is it? What does he put on film to go somewhere else? You don't technically. I don't think he needs a ton of film to go he's somewhere a, else. He's a junior, Malik. Which I technically I don't think basically he needs a ton TJ of, is too. I don't think he technically needs a ton of film to go somewhere else. You think so? I think that I think, I think he Texas scored is, enough points. Honestly, he could do whatever. He's a I think dual, if he's a true dual threat. Good enough, I think if Texas State's good enough that he will, uh, he'll be okay to leave. But I, Lindsey Scott Jr., low key, kind of the X factor. Because if he can convince Horns to be stick around, I mean, dude, well, this Sinai guy's, got a lifetime this guy's deal. suiting up for the XFL in the spring. So who knows what that transitional period will be like, you know? Oh, for Lindsay? Well, yeah. no, for Texas State, because Lindsay will probably not be there for most of like the meat of recruiting season. Well, I don't think you need him there for the meat. I think you need him there when guys are on campus. I think that's the big part. So he needs to be there in the summer and he needs to be there in the fall. Those are the two. Those are the two big things because he needs to work with these quarterbacks. But if he can convince Hornsby to stick around, that'd be that'd be huge. So, okay, let's talk about people pretty much saying our wife is going to cheat on us with these GJ Kinney takes. You know that that's what we're equating it to now. Because okay, even then, even still, the attitudes that I was around last week, Mike Craven to the left of me. Uh, and we were making our way downtown to the field, and we were still down. We got to see Texas State drive with like 145 left, zero timeouts, all the way to the end zone. Completely different game. The conversations me and Craven were having were, DJ Kinney's not going to have a season good enough to leave this year. Mac left, which may leave to UTEP to go and <laughs> take over the head coach over there because they're imploding right now. Um those are, those are all the bad takes we got off on our way to the football field all on right. Saturday. I got I got to love our guy Craven for zagging on being like this is this is <laughs> this is wishful thinking on his part that Texas State falls apart. Now he claims that he roots for all the Texas teams, and that might be true. But I know in his heart of hearts, he's roots against Texas State harder than he roots against any other team. And M fans might disagree with me on that. It was hard for him to watch it. I think. I I think so too. <laughs> I think he watched it through through cover. He covered his eyes and looked through his fingers, mm-hmm. um, like like a like a kid watching Saw the first time. No, I mean that is uh, that's some takes. I don't think GJ's leaving after one year. Uh, I don't think so Jake, either. Jacob, the bag man, Rodriguez has told us that he can get paid up to like what two hundred million dollars. Yeah, I um, did the I did the finances for Texas State, right? Yeah. I've, I've loosely crunched the numbers. Let's be honest, because you know who reports money accurately, unless you're talking to the IRS. This is yeah, the, yeah. these Who's, are the these are the public facing numbers that the only people Texas who State has pub- pushed out. The only people who do their numbers correctly are middle class Americans. That's it. Everybody else is cheating. 
the total operating budget for Texas State uh, last year, 2022, was like 700 million. I think this year is like 800 million. I could be wrong. Maybe it's like plus 50 or plus 100 million on either side, whatever. Basically, it's crazy money, right? We probably couldn't even figure that. That's like winning the Powerball and getting the cash option, $700 million. And that's what they're running Texas State on. I was telling Andrew earlier this year, effectively, Texas State has been running the athletics department on a shoestring budget because like, you know, none of these coaches are millionaires. If GJ got like an extension or some sort of new deal next year, he would probably be the first millionaire coach on campus. Uh, and Texas State can very affordably uh, pay GJ Kinney $2 million, $3 million a year if they so choose. So the like to say that Texas State can't really go band for band with another institution of similar size slash demographics or like even like I would say Houston, like Houston's the newest team in the Big 12. Like, I don't think they're going to make it. They don't got pockets that deep. Texas State, meantime, has generated donation amounts from the Bobcat Club. Eleven million dollars. That's nuts. They tweet out some I, facts and caps. I am not going. That is a Jacob Rodriguez TM. That's his take. I am not saying that. I there think you, you I think UH can go very much go deep, deep pockets. Um, I will say this. But, well, think about all the expansion, too, that they have to do on the U of H campus to keep up with the Big 12 stuff. Like they have they're kind of their pockets are spread pretty thin right now. I'm just saying. OK. I mean, they're I, definitely making a lot of money. They have a law school. They got a lot of other things going for them. We don't have any of that. A lot of rich alums. Shout out the losers and teachers for Texas State. Well, who we uh, got? George Strait, Randy Rogers, Jacob Rodriguez, Andrew Zimmel. Those, we're up there. We're in the round, yeah. Mount Rushmore. For sure. For sure. Uh, look, I, I think that you're right about the G.J. Kenny contract extension. Uh, I really do believe that if Texas State wanted to keep him, that they could keep him around. I think that the sneaky factor that is not being factored into this, it's not how much money you pay him, it's how much he pays assistants. Mm -hmm. Because the most important thing will be, can you keep the assistant coaches around? And yeah, left, which is important, but there's a lot of guys on that staff that are important. And I think that that is going to be a big thing too. So if it, if it means that GJ is getting paid 1.5 and then that pool is now closer to 750 instead of 500,000 to pull to the rest of the uh the coaching staff. I think that's going to be that would be more impactful than yeah. just paying him 2 million dollars. I can just see all of these things going up in real time like I, that's like a, anytime we have a completion. Like, boop, 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 boop. You know like oh, yeah, everything no. everything is trending upward right the now. The GJ and... Kenny stock like it we uh, I'll say this. When he got hired we were both ecstatic because it wasn't Kendall Bryles. <laughs> we were both like, hey, yep, not yep. Kendall Bryles. That's great. And that one happened late. That was a late development. And we were like, anybody but Kendall. Anybody but Kendall. Anybody but Kendall. So when Gigi got hired, I was like, okay, this is great. So I bought like a couple of penny shares. You know what I mean? We got in. And I think that you and I bought in early. And now we're not selling. But, you know, I'm looking at my portfolio here and I'm going, the GJ Kenny stock is pretty damn high. This is like the, probably the highest it's ever been. Dude, um, my Bobcat bonds are at an all time high right now. It's taking everything in me to cash out so I can live luxuriously for the rest uh, of my life. For sure. But, we can move the but Bobcat coin is going nowhere, I think. That is the Your coin Bobcat. of the future. Your, your crypto. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm happy with where things are right now. Um, but yeah, we're not going ban for ban with Houston. Stop it. You don't think so? I think we can go band for band with any G5. Yes. Yes. I 100% agree with that. UTSA, with any 5G school and your UTSA, little signals San you send Houston out. State. In fact, I think Texas State pays their coaches better than most coaches in the Sun Belt. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot more. They We have tons of offensive analysts. We just hired Lindsey Scott Jr. off the street, basically. So And we have no income tax. So a lot of reasons. But yeah, I, I not, think we're not uh, A&M with a. Qatari oil money, oil to, funny. Yes, money. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And to uh, to wrap up this conversation, the GJ Kenny is leaving in a year. That's not happening. I don't think it's happening. Um, it's happening. And we'll talk to him at the end of the season. Jacob and I, yeah. we're we're trying to set up an interview right now. Jacob is our booker. We'll set up an interview after bowl season and ask him how the season went, what he thought about year one, and we'll ask him, hey, are you leaving? Are you sticking around? What's the plan? And he'll tell us because he's been an honest guy to this point. I'm really thankful that everybody's been like kind of cool with us, just kind of running with football because normally we do talk about all the other sports next week. Deep tease on our channel. We're talking to Steve Holman, Texas State's second ever soccer coach ahead of the Sunbelt conference tournament. I think they play that one like on Halloween or very close to it. 
So spooky season. Yeah. <laughs> we have anything else to talk about? Uh, you grinded your axe against the people who say that tech state isn't making money. I grinded my axe against, uh, uh, Hawkins. I think we're okay. I think we're set. Yeah. I don't know. We talked about the loud crowd. Think what the stuff that Leslie is doing is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've said this before about that student section, worst fans in the Sun Belt, And that stock got a lot higher this past weekend. (laughs) Uh, granted, I guess they sort of had a reason to rebel, rebel with a cause this time, but uh, yeah, that stuff no excuse. can lose us games, just to let everybody know. And uh, she was on the other foot. Like, if we threw a water bottle, I hit a ULM player, broke their nose, we'd be talking about a whole list of sanctions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, they, yeah, that's true. And I will say this to the fact that we are getting talked about as like one of the best fan groups in the, te- in the Sun Belt, insane. Yes. Absolutely insane. I never thought we would get to this point, and I, I'm so happy that we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweet. Great episode, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Follow us online at Square and Pod. Look us up on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. We're available anywhere. You get a podcast. If you have a pulse, we have a podcast for you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking bushes. Better not come any closer. Thanks for listening. New episodes out every Thursday. Follow the boys on Twitter. Eat them up. Eat them up. Eat em up.